ச ஈஷோ நேர்வச்சனிய பிரேம ஸ்வரூப த லார்ட் ஹூஸ் நேச்சர் இஸ் அன்ஸ்பீக்கபிள் லவ் தட் திஸ் கேரக்டரிஸ்டிக் ஆஃப் காட் மென்ஷன்ட் பை நரதா இஸ் மேனிஃபெஸ்ட் அண்ட் அட்மிட்டட் ஆன் ஆல் ஹேண்ட்ஸ் இஸ் த ஃபர்ம் கன்விக்ஷன் ஆஃப் மை லைஃப் த அக்ரிகேட் ஆஃப் மெனி இண்டிவிஜுவல்ஸ் இஸ் கால்ட் சமஷ்டி த ஹோல் அண்ட் ஈச் இண்டிவிஜுவல் இஸ் கால்ட் வியஷ்டி அ பார்ட் யூ அண்ட் ஐ ஈச் இஸ் வியஷ்டி சொசைட்டி இஸ் சமஷ்டி யூ ஐ an animal a bird a worm an insect a tree a creeper the earth a planet a star each is vyashti while this universe is samashti which is called virat hiranya garbha or ishvara in vedanta and brahma vishnu devi etc in the puranas whether or not vyashti has individual freedom and if it has what should be its measure whether or not vyashti should completely sacrifice its own will its own happiness for samashti are the perennial problems before every society society everywhere is busy finding the solution of these problems these like big waves are agitating modern western society the doctrine which demands the sacrifice of individual freedom to social supremacy is called socialism while that which advocates the cause of the individual is called individualism A motherland is a glowing example of the results and consequence of the eternal subjection of the individual to society and forced self-sacrifice by dint of institution and discipline. In this country men are born according to shastric injunctions. They eat and drink by prescribed rules throughout life. They go through marriage and kindred functions in the same way. In short, they even die according to shastric injunctions. The hard discipline with the exception of one great good point is fraught with evil the good point is that men can do one or two things well with very little effort having practiced them every day through generations the delicious rice and curry which a cook of this country prepares with the aid of three lumps of earth and a few sticks can be had nowhere else with the simple mechanism of an antediluvian loom worth 1 rupee and the feet put in a pit It is possible to make kin cobs worth 20 rupees a yard in this country alone a torn mat an earthen lamp and that fed by castor oil with the aid of materials such as these wonderful savants are produced in this country alone and all for bearing attachment to an ugly and deformed wife and a lifelong devotion to a worthless and villainous husband are possible in this country alone thus far the bright side but all these things are done by people guided like lifeless machines there is no mental activity no unfoldment of the heart no vibration of life no flux of hope there is no strong stimulation of the will no experience of keen pleasure nor the contact of intense sorrow there is no stir of inventive genius no desire for novelty no appreciation of new things clouds never pass away from this mind The radiant picture of the morning sun never charms this heart it never even occurs to this mind if there is any better state than this where it does it cannot convince in the event of conviction effort is lacking and even where there is effort lack of enthusiasm kills it out if living by rule alone ensures excellence if it be virtue to follow strictly the rules and customs handed down through generations say then who is more virtuous than a tree who is a greater devotee a holier saint than a railway train who has ever seen a piece of stone transgress a natural law who has ever known cattle to commit sin the huge steamer the mighty railway engine they are non intelligent they move turn and run but they are without intelligence and yonder tiny worm which moved away from the railway line to save its life why is it intelligent there is no manifestation of will in the machine the machine never wishes to transgress law the worm wants to oppose law rises against law whether it succeeds or not therefore it is intelligent greater is the happiness higher is the jiva in proportion as this will is more successfully manifest the will of god is perfectly fruitful therefore he is the highest what is education is it book learning no is it diverse knowledge not even that the training by which the current and expression of will are brought under control and become fruitful is called education now consider is that education as a result of which the will 
being continuously choked by force through generations, is well nigh killed out? Is that education under whose sway even the old ideas, let alone the new ones, are disappearing one by one? Is that education which is slowly making man a machine? It is more blessed, in my opinion, even to go wrong, impelled by one's free will and intelligence, than to be good as an automaton. Again, can that be called society which is formed by an aggregate of men who are like lumps of clay, like lifeless machines, like heaped up pebbles? How can such society fare well? Were good possible, then instead of being slaves for hundreds of years, we would have been the greatest nation on earth, and this soil of India, instead of being a mine of stupidity, would have been the eternal fountainhead of learning. Is not self-sacrifice then a virtue? Is it not the most virtuous deed to sacrifice the happiness of one, the welfare of one, for the sake of the many? Exactly. But as the Bengali adage goes, can beauty be manufactured by rubbing and scrubbing? Can love be generated by effort and compulsion? What glory is there in the renunciation of an eternal beggar? What virtue is there in the sense control of one devoid of sense power? What again is the self-sacrifice of one devoid of idea, devoid of heart, devoid of high ambition, and devoid of the conception of what constitutes society? What expression of devotedness to a husband is there by forcing a widow to commit sati? Why make people do virtuous deeds by teaching superstitions? I say, liberate, undo the shackles of people as much as you can. Can dirt be washed by dirt? Can bondage be removed by bondage? Where is the instance? When you would be able to sacrifice all desire for happiness for the sake of society, then you would be the Buddha. Then you would be free. That is far off. Again, do you think the way to do it lies through oppression? Oh, what examples or self-denial are our widows? Oh, how sweet is child marriage? Is another such custom possible? Can there be anything but love between husband and wife in such a marriage? Such is the wine going round nowadays. But as to the men, the masters of the situation, there is no need of self-denial for them. Is there a virtue higher than serving others? But the same does not apply to Brahmins. You others do it. The truth is that in this country, parents and relatives can ruthlessly sacrifice the best interests of their children and others for their own selfish ends to save themselves by compromise to society. And the teaching of generations rendering the mind callous has made it perfectly easy. He, the brave alone, can deny self. The coward, afraid of the lash, with one hand wipes his eyes and gives with the other. Of what avail are such gifts? It is a far cry to love universal. The young plant should be hedged in and taken care of. One can hope gradually to attain to universal love if one can learn to love one object unselfishly. If devotion to one particular Ishtadevata is attained, devotion to the universal Virat is gradually possible. Therefore, when one has been able to deny self for an individual, one should talk of self-sacrifice for the sake of society, not before. It is action with desire that leads to action without desire. Is the renunciation of desire possible if desire did not exist in the beginning? And what could it mean? Can light have any meaning if there is no darkness? Worship with desire, with attachment, comes first. Commence with the worship of the little, then the greater will come of itself. Mother, be not anxious. It is against the big tree that the great wind strikes. Poking a fire makes it burn better. A snake struck on the head raises its hood, and so on. When there comes affliction in the heart, when the storm of sorrow blows all around, and it seems light will be seen no more, when hope and courage are almost gone, it is then, in the midst of this great spiritual tempest, that the light of Brahman within gleams. Brought up in the lap of luxury, lying on a bed of roses, and never shedding a tear, who has ever become great? Who has ever unfolded the Brahman within? Why do you fear to weep? Weep! Weeping clears the eyes and brings about intuition. Then the vision of diversity, man, animal, tree, slowly melting away, makes room for the infinite realization of Brahman everywhere and in everything. Then, Samam Pashyan hi Sarvatra, Samavasthitamishwaram, Na Hinastyatma Natmanam, Tato Yati Paramgatim. Verily, seeing the same God equally existent everywhere, 
he does not injure the self by the self and so goes to the supreme goal.